Today's notes are on solving equations with variables on both sides, and we have steps to do that that give us the best results. So hopefully you're looking at your notes template with those five spots for steps. So our first step is to eliminate groupings on each side of the equation. So you're looking for distributive property there. So I'm writing eliminate groupings on each side, but when we're talking about sides, anytime we mention that, we're talking about sides of the equation. So just for future reference, if I'm talking about on a side, I'm talking about the side of an equal sign. So once we take care of distributive property or eliminating any groupings, um, we want to simplify each side or simplify each expression. By combining like terms. Now you want to be careful there, you don't want to cross the equal sign. Like terms that are on one side need to stay on that side, but combine. Terms on the other side stay on that side and combine. So no crossing the equal sign in that step. And then you want to get variables to one side and constants to another. Typically, we will use ALE for that. And then once you've got variables on one side and constant terms on the other side, you want to isolate the variable, which just means to get that variable all by itself. So like x equals, etc. And that's typically MLE or division, depending on like the form that you're using. And then, of course, we check our solution. And when we find a good check, then we put our results in set braces. So let's take you through some examples following those steps. We can... Um, take a look through, we look for groupings, but we don't have any groupings on either side of the equation here. We look for like terms, but we don't have like terms on either side of the equation. So both sides of the equation are simplified in this case. So we get on to step three, which is to get variable terms to one side and constant terms to another. So it's gonna be two steps, two kind of sub-steps of ALE, and so I'm like my x's on the left, it's just, just a preference there, so I'm going to get rid of my constant term. My constants are the minus 5 or negative 5 and minus 35. So to get those to one side, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. That would leave me with 11x on the left and 6x minus 30 or plus negative 30 on the right. Then I want to take care of my variable terms. I have variable terms of 6x on one side and 11x on the other. So I want them to one side, so I'm going to subtract 6x off both sides. And so that gives me 5x is equal to a negative 30. And that brings me to step 4, to isolate the variable. 
and isolating the variable means I want to get that x by itself. Right now it's being multiplied by 5, so to undo that I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Now I could also show that as multiplying both sides by 1 fifth, so you might see that done some places and that's fine as well. And those will cancel and then I get x is equal to negative 6. And I'm hoping that's my solution, but I always want to be sure. So I'm going to check. To do my check, I'm going to write the original equation. And then when I do the next line, instead of x, I'm going to put in what I'm hoping is that solution. So you can see that I'm just substituting in that negative 6, which I'm hoping is equal to x on both sides. And then I simply follow order of operations on each side of the equal sign. So order of operations on the left hand side would be to multiply. And um, I end up with negative 71 there. And order of operations on the right, again, to multiply before I subtract. And I also end up with negative 71. When you have a match, that's great, um, because that means that you've found the right solution. So you can kind of go back over to the other side and put your solution in set brackets. So taking a look at example two, we see we do have groupings on the left-hand expression. So we want to make sure that we apply distributive to that and get rid of the groupings first. And 3 times the x will give us 3x. Three, 3 times the 2 will give us 6. And that's that kind of first step. We can simplify the left-hand side. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, we have like terms of 3x and negative 4x. And when we combine those, that would give us a negative 1x plus the 6. And we have 2x plus 9 on the right. Now we're moving to that ALE, or getting variables, terms to one side, constants to the other. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Again, what side you move variables and constants to is up to you. I will typically choose to move the variable terms to the left. And that gives me that 2x plus 3 on the right-hand side. And then I want to move my variable terms to the same side, so I'm going to subtract 2x off the right. And of course then 2x off the left to keep it equal, that's that ALE. And that's going to give me a negative 3x on the left and 3 on the right. And this is that step now of isolating the variable. And in the last one I, I divided, uh, this one I, again, you could divide by negative 3. I'm just going to show it as multiplying by negative 1 third just so you can see the another way to show that step. And that's that MLE step. And that gives us 1x, or just x, is equal to negative 1. So I'm hoping that's my solution, but of course I always want to do a check to make sure. So in my check spot, I'm going to write the original equation. And then just in place of the x, I'm going to put in that negative 1 because I'm hoping that's what the x is in fact equal to. And then on each side of the equal sign, I just follow order of operations. So I mean, you can put that all into your calculator. You're allowed to use a calculator for these, so you could go ahead and do that. But I just want to show you that it does work out. You're following order of ops. This will give you 1. And we end up 
with 3 plus 4 equals negative 2 plus 9. And of course that gives us 7 equals 7. And again, we end up with that match. And when we found the replacement for the variable that makes that a true statement, then that's a good thing. And we can kind of go back here and put our solution in set braces. So in example 3, we see some groupings that we need to eliminate. I just want to point out here that you have to be really careful when you have this minus sign in front of a whole group. It's that whole group that's being subtracted. So you do want to make sure that you're kind of sharing that minus or sharing that negative with everything in the group. So it's a good idea most of the time to change your subtraction before you eliminate groupings. So Again, if that's not easy for you to keep track of, then definitely change your subtraction first. And so we're going to distribute there, and we get 6 plus negative 15x plus 10. It's that negative times negative. And then on the right-hand side, eliminating that grouping as well. And then hopefully realizing that you do, again, have like terms on both sides, on the left side rather, you have 6 and 10, so we have negative 15x plus 16 is equal to negative 12x plus 28. And we want to get our constants to one side, so I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. And then I want to get my variables to one side. So I'm going to add a 12x to eliminate that negative 12x. So those would cancel. It gives me negative 3x is equal to 12. And then to get isolate that variable, I want to divide by negative 3 on both sides. And I get that x is equal to negative 4. Now, of course, I'm going to check that. So let's go through and do the check. So again, to do the check, I write my original equation. I plug in my hopeful solution, and I'm going to see what I get on both sides of the equal sign following order of operations. So I go through and I just follow order of operations on both sides. And I get 76 equals, equals 76. So I know that I've gotten the same thing on both sides, so I found the replacement for a variable that makes that statement true, which means I can put my solution in set braces. So for example four, we see we have uh, grouping symbols, and so we need to distribute. Don't let the fractional values throw you off. You're going to do the same solving process as you would uh, if fractions were not involved. So we're going to distribute the 3. Again, you can use your calculator for this. You'll see me uh, kind of work it through without. So I'm multiplying 3 times 5, 6. That's just going to give me 15 sixth x minus 6 minus 2. And then on the right, I have 9 halves x plus 12. I do have like terms on the left, the minus 6 and the minus 2. So when I combine my like terms, that gives me... Uh, minus 8 or plus negative 8. And then I want to start getting constants to one side and variables to the other side. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides to get my constants off the left hand side. And then I want to get my variable terms off the right hand side so I'm gonna subtract nine halves from both sides um, now I wanna take care of that with the 15 6 so I'm just gonna think about that in terms of 6 with an equivalent fraction there so that's actually 27 6 that I wanna subtract x that I wanna subtract off each side again you can use your calculator for that if you need to, and um, that's going to give me negative 12 sixths x is equal to 
Oh, it looks like I didn't add there. I need to go back and say, oh, that's 20. So there we go. Catch my error there. And negative 12, 6 is a negative 2x is equal to 20. And just kind of bringing this up here so I can continue to work. So my negative 2x is equal to 20. I need to divide both sides by negative 2 or multiply by negative 1 half. And those will cancel. And that gives me a negative 10. In which case then I want to check. So I want to show my check. So to do your check you're plugging in the negative 10 for the x value. And again you can use your calculator. The idea is you're following order of operations on each side. Just to save time here I'm, I am going to just kind of plug that in. And you end up with negative 33 on the left and when you plug in that right hand side negative 33 on the right that's happy we get the same thing we know that our solution is in fact negative 10. All right for example five again looking at eliminating grouping so we have some distributive to take care of and if you want to change that subtraction first that's fine too. We multiply 0 0.5 times negative 24, we're going to get negative 12. And then that's going to be minus 4x. And distributing over here. And um, 0.2 times 5x just gives us 1x or x. Minus 3 and then minus 9. And we look for like terms on either side of the equation. And we have the like terms right here. So we want to combine our minus 3 and minus 9. So negative 12 minus 4x is equal to 1x minus 12, or plus negative 12. Then we're working on getting constants to one side, variable terms to the other. And just so you can see that it, you can go to either side, I'll put my x on the right this time. So I'll add 4x to both sides. And we get 5x minus 12 on the right. Then getting rid of the constants on the right, that'll we'll be adding 12 to both sides. And that gives us 5x is equal to 0. And then isolating that variable, we would divide both sides by 5 or multiply both sides by 1 fifth. And there is our hopeful solution of 0. So we're going to want to do our check. I'm going to rewrite the equation over here. So you're rewriting the original plug in your supposed solution of zero or your hopeful solution of zero. And you want to simplify on both sides of the equations, just following order of operations. So when I plug and chug the order of operations on that side, I get negative 12. And then on the right, also negative 12. So that's good. Anytime we get that same thing, that match, that's telling us we found the replacement for the variable that makes the statement true. And so we can put our solution in set braces. Don't forget to bring all your questions to your teacher. Have a good night.